Okay, hi everybody. Welcome out there. Hope everybody's tuned in. And uh, here I am, youth. Uh, miss all 40 of your faces sitting out there. Wish we, you guys were here, but you know, it's the corona thing. So here we are. This is what we're going to do tonight. Uh, right now, let's just go into the presence of God in prayer. So if you just bow your heads, close your eyes. Dear sweet Heavenly Father, I just ask in Jesus' name, Lord, that there's more of you and less of me in this lesson, Father, and that you're just with us in this Bible study, Father, that we learn something, that we get something out of this, Father, that we just love you and honor you, and we just ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. The title this evening is, Have No Fear, for a Savior is Near. Don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. God commands us not to fear or worry in Isaiah 43.1. Most likely, he tells us this because he knows the enemy uses fear to decrease our hope and limit our victories. God tells us in John 10.10 10, that the thief comes Most only to steal and, and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. For the next 20 minutes, we're going to talk about putting on your armor and fighting the enemy. That wants to steal, kill, and destroy. What the Lord has planned for you. We can say that we are facing fear today with what's going on in the world right now. This virus has us on a high alert. There's families that are hurting. Education is hurting. The finances are hurting. What we must do as Christians is stay calm and just pray. You might be in a household where school, work, social gatherings... It was an escape. It was your escape. Now you must deal with your parents more than you want. And they must deal with you more than they probably want, maybe. Or they're, maybe they're enjoying you. Hopefully that's what's going on. I wonder how many arguments there's been just over the yelling of washing your hands. Um, then you yell back, I am. And then there's like a whole entire fight about it. Stop yelling at me. You know, you, I know what to do. Hopefully you guys aren't arguing too much about that, getting into fights over the little things in life. But the little things that we nag about, they could turn into bigger fights, though, unfortunately. Then again, is it worse than just that? I hope not. We all face heartache of some kind. Life for a Christian is not always going to be rainbows and smiles, unfortunately. Some people seem to believe that when you become a Christian that all your trials go away. Some have called this prosperity gospel, which means if you believe in Jesus, everything will be great. I wish it was like that, but this time of belief is not found in scripture. Jesus never told his followers that if they followed him, everything would be great and rosy. He told people that followed him that it would be a difficult road. Thankfully, there are many passages and verses concerning trials and tribulations. God offers help for today and hope for the future. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In Psalms 27, verse 1. There are some other words that are used too. They are trouble, affliction, something that causes pain and suffering, and oppression. Now what is oppression? The state of being subject to an unjust treatment or control. Mental pressure, distress. We can say, yeah, that sounds like the devil, and yes, it is. But how many times has God sent the Holy Spirit to you, tugged at your heart, said, come spend time with me, choose me? And God says in Deuteronomy 30, 19, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your seed may live. The choice is yours. It's crystal clear. You cannot claim ignorance, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die on the cross for our sins, that whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. Praise God. Praise God for the love and the mercy that he shows us every day. Now, how do we fight back in this world, you guys? And this is what we were kind of talking about before all this happened and 
school closed. We got that information today, which I was kind of sad. If you have me on Facebook, you would see that I played a harsh joke with Joseph today. I didn't think he'd cry that hard when I told him that he was going to school tomorrow, but he did, and I felt kind of bad about it. So, But then, you know, I had to take a picture of it as well. But then I told him, nope, there's no school for the rest of the year. That's actually a really sad thing for our seniors. And the seniors that we have, you guys, I'm so sorry about that because I'm sure that you were looking forward to a lot of things. And, you know, God willing, I believe that, you know, good things are going to come to you guys. But how do we fight back in this world? And what we left off with was in Ephesians, in chapter 6, verse 10, the armor of God. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on your full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, to stand firm, then the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the, brace, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. So number one, what I want you to do is I want you to identify who the enemy is and who are the powerful forces, and they're the fallen angels. It's the demons controlled by the devil. You must realize that he is real, and that's the first thing that you guys got to understand and realize that the devil is real be self-controlled and alert your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour in first peter verse 5 or chapter 5 sorry verse 8 they choose victims who are alone and weak for they for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Be wise and look out for the devil's schemes. Now, number two, you need to stand firm. And with everything that's going on this day, we need to stand firm. You guys, please read your Bibles, okay? Please keep praying. You know, hold yourself accountable for your choices that you're making. You have a lot of time, maybe by yourself. Maybe you're fighting with, your, you know, your families at home. You know, try to help out. Try to be Christ-like, you know. And then number two, that's what I'm talking about, is stand firm, dressing for the battle. Now we have the seven pieces of the armor of God and how to use them. Number one is the belt of truth. The soldier to be fitted with his belt meant he was ready to face action. Truth is the belt that holds the believer's armor together as well. Ultimate truth can be found in God's word and in the person of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 14, verse 6, we must know this truth in order to protect ourselves against our flesh and the world and the father of lies. Truth grounds us and reminds us of our identity in Christ. Don't forget who you are in Christ. Number two, the breastplate of righteousness. The soldier was also equipped with a breastplate. This armor was to protect his vital organs. The breastplate was for an unexpected, unexpected advances of the enemy. Our breastplate is his righteousness. His righteousness will never fail. Though we have no righteousness of our own, we must still, by his power, choose to do right. Choose to do right. Living a right life rooted in God's word is powerful in protecting our heart healing our flesh, and defeating the enemy. Number three, what we talked about was the, the foot gear. And what does that mean? That means like the readiness to spread the good news. 
You guys have such an advantage right now with the, I mean, look what we're doing right now. Just me being live, me being able to talk to you. I'm hoping that a lot of you guys, if you're not listening to it right now, that you'll go and you'll listen to it later because I want you to remember these things. This is what we've been uh, learning and trying to memorize is how we're going to fight against the enemy. What is it that we need to do? The foot gear, readiness to spread the good news. That's what people need to hear right now, you guys, is that we need to just comfort people. We need to love people. There's a lot of people that may not have the faith that you have. Or if you do have fear yourself, don't fear these things that is going on around us. But the readiness to spread the good news. Satan would love for us to stay quiet, make us believe that it is worthless, or to tell ourselves that someone else will do it. Somebody else will tell them about Jesus. I'm too embarrassed. I don't want to do it. You know, don't, don't do that. But the foot gear that God gives us is the motivation to continue to proclaim and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we're here for, you guys. That's what it's all about. Like what I've been telling you guys. You know, you're not in school, but that don't mean nothing. You guys get on that phone. You guys Snapchat. Whatever you have to do, say, hey, I'm here for you. You know, pray with me. I'm going through a lot of problems. You know, be there for your brothers and sisters in Christ and the ones that don't know Christ. So number four, the shield of faith. Faith is the shield of the believer, trusting in God's power and protection and remaining steadfast. When the battle rages, we must remember that God works all things for good. He is always true to his promises. Amen. The helmet of salvation, number five. The believer's helmet of salvation is the most crucial piece of the armor for the, for the Christian. The devil wants us to doubt God. He doesn't want you believing in God. He wants you to doubt God, Jesus, and our salvation. There's a lot of you guys that have just given your life over to the Lord. Even um, don't stop seeking him. Don't stop reading the word. Open your Bibles. It's like the helmet is to protect our minds from God's saving work for us. We need to protect our minds. You need to put your helmets on. Number six, the sword of the spirit. Our sword is the word of God, our Bibles. Every other piece of armor protects us against attacks. With God's word, we are truly able to fight and defeat all enemies. Christ used scripture to defeat Satan when he was tempted in the desert. We went over that a while back ago when uh, Jesus was in the desert. And Jesus had fasted for, if we were here doing live, or you guys were here in front of me, I was like, how many days, how many nights? And I would hope a lot of you guys would say 40 days and 40 nights. And it says the tempter, Satan, said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise God. That's, that's just, I love that verse right there. And it says Matthew chapter 4, verses 2 three, through 4. And it says we must do the same. We must, you guys, we have to have the words that are coming from God. We can't just be us. It's just like what I tell you. You guys can't get in this Bible and just take from it and add to it or say, well, God knows my heart. No, it's just like how we learn the Ten Commandments. Every time when we break up in our small groups, we're learning the Ten Commandments. Number seven, prayer. Our entire armor is rooted in his strength. Without his presence, we are powerless in this fight. We must fight on our knees. The one who has won the war is with, is with us in battle. We will see victory when we fight in his power. Amen? So with all seven of those that we've gone over, I'm just going to go over them just real quick. Just number one, what I was saying I want you guys to identify the enemy, who the enemy is. It's the devil, okay? Two, stand firm. I want you to stand firm in this battle. And then the seven pieces of the armor is one, the belt of truth. Two, the breastplate of righteousness. Three, the foot gear, readiness to spread the good word. Number four, the shield of faith. And number five, the helmet of salvation. That's to protect our minds. Right now, you need a lot of protection from your minds. 
Okay. I hope you guys are making godly choices out there. And number six, the sword of the spirit. That's our Bibles. Okay. And number seven, prayer. You have to pray, please. Like I tell you, pray before you go to bed. Pray when you get up. But most importantly right now, too, what I want to talk to you guys about, my young ones out there, my babies, I want you guys to really take this virus serious, too, as well. I know that you guys are probably wanting to run around. I miss your energy. I, you know, I love you guys. I wish that we were had church open tonight. But the thing is, is take it, use wisdom. I don't want you living in fear because we shouldn't fear, but you have to use wisdom right now. Okay, don't argue with your parents, you know, try to help them, you know, try to be Christ-like. Remember that, like help with dinner. You boys get out there in the yard, you know, get busy with something. Help a neighbor, just keep your distance, you know, but use wisdom in all this. Don't be walking the streets and sharing pops and candies and, you know, going home and giving it to your older people at home. This is what, this is what we're trying to prevent. So you guys, for the ones that maybe not taking it all that serious, take it serious. But I also just um, want to encourage you guys to please read your Bibles. I hope you're watching this. And um, right now we're just going to go ahead and um, we'll go over our Ten Commandments real quick. As if we were breaking into small groups. And number one, you shall have no other gods before me. Number two, you shall, have, you shall not make for yourselves an idol. Number three, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Number four, remember remember the day, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. I got a little tongue tied on that one. We haven't been to church this. <laughs> but number five, though, honor your father and your mother. Number six, you shall not kill. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Number eight, you shall not steal. Number nine, you shall not lie. And number ten, you shall not covet. And then our Bible verse, you guys, in First Timothy four twelve. Don't let anyone look down on you because of you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech and conduct and conduct and love and faith and purity. I want you guys to be an example in town, everywhere that you're at, at home. You know, just bless your food, you know. Is something as simple as that as well. Just more God and less of you, okay? Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and close in prayer. But I want to take this opportunity, though, too, to speak to the ones that may have not given their life to God that is watching this right now. And you may be young, you may be older, doesn't matter. I just want, in this time that we're living and what's going on around us, everyone should be turning to God in this time. We should be praying for our president. We should be praying for our leaders. We should be praying for each other, our households. We should be praying for just so many things that we need to be praying for. But the number one thing is just like what the first commandment says, there should be no other gods before me. God should be number one in your life, you guys. And that's what it's all about. Because when it's time to leave this earth, when it's time to go, there's not going to be nobody else around except you and God. That's the reason why it's so important that God comes first. Because then he can show you what to do, when to do it, how to do it. So I ask right now in Jesus' name, Father, that everyone bow their heads, close their eyes, and just repeat this prayer after me. Say, God, I know that you died on the cross for me, that you sent your only son to die on the cross for me, that if there was nobody else there, that you would have still died on the cross just for me, that you love me that much. I just repent of my sins, Father. I ask for your forgiveness. The things that I'm doing in life right now, Father, that I just give those all to you, that I repent for everything that's not of you, God, and that you just help me to be Christ-like. I ask you to come into my heart right now. I praise you. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And you guys, if you've prayed that, then there's numbers on the website. My number's on there. You guys know Kaylee, Seth, even Christian. You guys reach out to us if you need to pray, if you need to talk. Whatever it is, you guys know that you guys can come to us and, you know, we'll be there for you.
So I just love you guys. You guys take care. God bless. We're going to close in prayer, and then I'll say good night. <laughs> okay, dear sweet Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time. I just ask in Jesus' name that you just have um, a hand over this whole coronavirus, Father, that we just rebuke it in Jesus' name, Father. We just ask that you continue to watch over our medical teams out there, Father, that are working so hard, Lord, and that you just um, just help to get rid of this coronavirus, Lord, that just we just rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We also just pray for our church family, for our families, and that the ones that are hurting right now, that are in pain, the ones that are having health issues, Father, I just ask in Jesus' name that you just give them a complete healing, Father. I just ask, Father, that you continue just to be with us, that we just seek you, that we seek your word, and that we just ask that you just continue to be with us, to help us in this time where there may be fear going on in the homes, Father, and that we just ask in Jesus' name that you just let everyone know that you are here, that you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us, Father. We know your word is true. We just praise you for that. We love you, God. We thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives, Father. And for the ones that are out there that are hurting, the ones that are out there that need food or anything, Father, that we can be a light, that they can call the church and that we can help them with the food pantry. We just pray that um, you continue to be with us, watch over our town as well, Father, that the coronavirus doesn't come. We just rebuke that in Jesus' name as well. And uh, we just thank you for everything that you do, Father. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, good night, you guys.